1942, the Canadian Department of National Defence believed that with the development of the situation during World War II, the Allies would need a light-tracked vehicle for communication, reconnaissance, and even airborne missions. This vehicle should also have amphibious capabilities. After acknowledging this need, they began developing a tracked jeep. In June 1943, the Canadian Army Engineering Design Department and the American Willis Overland Company signed a contract to build five prototype tracked jeeps. This new vehicle used many Willis Jeep components, even though they looked completely different on the outside. The prototype did not have the same appearance as the Willis Jeep. The designers mounted the engine transversely at the rear of the vehicle, which shortened the overall length. The vehicle suspension was tracked, with four pairs of small diameter bogey wheels and a pair of spring steering wheels. The bogey wheels used a Christie suspension, with the drive wheel at the rear and the idler wheel at the front. The Jeep had welded armored plates for protection on all sides and the bottom, with observation slits in the front and both sides. The crew consisted of two people, and the vehicle could carry a Bren machine gun for self-defense, as well as a standard Commonwealth wireless radio. Considering the Jeep's need for frontline combat and the complexity of its track structure, the track Jeep was required to have a major overhaul interval of 3,200 hours, with only simple maintenance required for daily operations. Components such as tracks and suspension could be quickly disassembled for complete replacement. The first prototype was unveiled in April 1944 and subsequently underwent some initial testing. It was quickly discovered that the tracks were prone to coming off easily, but this issue was resolved by appropriately increasing the diameter of the bogey wheels. The vehicle performed well on soft ground, had strong traction, and reliable climbing capabilities. In July of the same year, Canada brought the prototype to the UK, but it was met with disdain from the British. Looking at the equipment, which was similar to the Carden Lloyd tankette, the British clearly refused to accept it, even though they were both part of the Commonwealth. After some discussions, representatives from the UK viewed the tracked Jeep's testing in September. While the vehicle's performance was still good, the representatives did not make any commitments. Subsequent testing gradually revealed issues with the vehicle. The main problems were concentrated in the suspension and tracks. The track links were prone to breakage after 500 to 800 kilometers of travel, and the axles of the steering frame would break. Even if the axles of the steering frame remained intact, they would wear out and fail after traveling 3,700 kilometers. More importantly, these tests were conducted in relatively good terrain, indicating how poor the reliability of the tracks and bogey wheels was. Although Canada continued to improve the track Jeep, such as using rubber tracks, the vehicle's performance did not change much. In the 1945 tests, it still did not meet practical standards. Furthermore, in the late stages of World War II, the UK had new standards for a new generation of armored vehicles. The capacity was increased, and Canada proposed the two Malawi and Quachas version. Due to production issues, the two Malawi and Quachas prototype was not produced until the end of the war. Unfortunately, in 1946, after the war had ended, Canada's independent testing also showed that the track Jeep had a fatal flaw in its track system, leading to its abandonment. In fact, Canada had intended to market the track Jeep to other Commonwealth members such as Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. However, the track Jeep, although sounding like an innovative vehicle, was actually just a light-tracked vehicle. Canada just refused to admit this, perhaps seeing it as a promotional highlight. For users such as the British military, the track Jeep not only did not have an advantage in performance over the Carden Lloyd tankette, but its own reliability was also substandard. Purchasing it was purely redundant. Another issue was that the vehicle was produced by the American Willis Overland Company, not Canada's own production, and it used some Willis Jeep components. So, who would have the final say on the mass production of this vehicle? Even several prototype vehicles were ordered in the name of Canada and then donated to the UK for testing, also involving interests that had to be considered.